All right, uh, Shalom. Before I start, we give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakurash. Give honors to the elders and apostles, Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the like Akim. Walk, walking, learning, and teaching in truth and sincerity. All right, this is going to be another video through the Spirit dealing with uh, uh, our man's Enrique Terrio. You know, uh, the guy who apparently he was the leader of the Proud Boys. And okay, I just looked him up. It says. Henry Enrique Terrio is the chairman of the Proud Boys, a far-right, neo-fascist, and male-only political organization that promotes and engages in political violence in the United States and Canada. You know, it says he's 37 years old, you know, American Republic Party, you know, but apparently it just came out that this man <laughs> was FBI informant, you know, and when he was asked about it he said i don't recall that you know i was listening to some videos i just watched a little clip from the young turks you know you type in fbi informant enrique terrio and this guy will pop up and the whole point of this video dealing with the fact that hey this truth everybody hey esau can break anybody but the only people he cannot break is the elect and what i mean by that is this man e has the ability to uh by means of scaring people through torture, bribery, you know, wickedness, he will cause these people to throw their morals out of the window. You know, here it is. And it looked at suspicious having a so-called uh, Latino being the leader of a white Edomite group. You know, it's because he is a setup. You know, it's a big setup. You know, he has the look. He has the, the, the it factor. And then he had it going for him. And it went and work now his dad could be an edomite and his mom a, a spick i'm not 100 percent sure i'm gonna assume from looking at him and his name that he's a, a northern kingdom you know he looked uh i'm gonna assume he's ephraim you know puerto rican i could be incorrect though but you know it's it's is is there's no there's no surprise but it's just like dang you know so it just further goes to show you the only salvation that we're gonna get is out of the truth of this bible because when you read the scriptures the men of the lord the children of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, those that are chosen don't crack under pressure. All right. When we're faced with death, we simply deal with it. When we're faced with life or death situations over our faith, we deal with it. So the only way you're going to make it out of this is if you are of the elect. These people in the world can be bribed, all right, paid off, uh, uh, threatened with violence and torture, and they get scared to the point to where they'll do anything. All right. But we have plenty of famous, famous examples in the scriptures. Let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 6, or no, uh, chapter 7. All right, we have many famous examples in the scriptures where the men of the Lord don't crack, all right, don't break. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about because this is something that I think about. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to have to put a spirit on us. Hell, even a, sp a spirit on the women of the one third, the women that are chosen t for salvation, even they're going to have a, a, a little tough spirit on them for them not to give in to E, all right. Hey, these people in the world, man, I don't care. Uh, another reason why, look, if a nigga, a nigga can be seven foot ten, you know, we, hey, nigga what? You know, <laughs> these people on the inside, no matter how threatening they look on the outside, no matter what they practice, no matter what they know, these people in the world, they're weak, all right, on the inside. They are, they're weak because they don't have the faith of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. They don't have any true constitution. Anything that they believe in can easily be swayed or out overthrown by a dollar bill or by the threaten, the threatening of a jail sentence. All right. So really, hey, don't be scared of nobody. You know, don't be out here on no dummy shit. But you know, you got Jake in the world. They say I don't fear nobody but God. Well, we have to really practice that. Fuck these people. These niggas are these niggas are niggas are sending a rat on their mama, man. All right. Second Maccabees seven, and I'm gonna start at uh. I'm going to start at verse, let me see. We'll start with the youngest son, all right? Because the youngest son, now, you know, you know, everyone should be familiar with this story. Second Mac could be seven. You had, was it uh, sons? I believe it was seven sons. Yeah, seven brethren. We'll read the first verse. Second Mac could be 701. And it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. So you had seven men and their mother being tortured unto the death. All right, they said, look, the Greeks were saying, look, eat this pork and we'll let you live. And every one of them said no. All right, each brother 
when they was brought up they would say their piece they would basically say f you i'll die right now f you i'm not eating that pork i'd rather die than to disobey the heavenly father and they would get put to death one by one all right and so we go down to the i believe this is the youngest brother all right this is second maccabees we're going to do seven and because it says they got to the sixth brother and then it says let me see <laughs> Let me see. Okay, so this was the youngest. All right, he had already went through the sixth one, I believe. So, yo, this is the youngest. So, second Maccabees be seven twenty-five. But when the young man would, in no case, hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she pr promised him that she would counsel her son. But she bound herself toward him, laughing the cruel, cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in the country language of this manner. O oh, my son, have pity upon me that I bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up into this age, and endured the troubles of education. So, basically, the king, Antiochus, he was like, look, to the mother, look, I'm about to kill your last son. Talk to him, convince him to just eat this pork, and I'll let him live and she went to him speaking the Hebrew so they couldn't understand you know basically giving her last words to her son you know like if I, if I would have had it my way I wouldn't have had you been born into this time period hey she didn't tell him to go rat and snitch hey in today's time how many of y'all you know how many of our mamas would just tell us to give in to the government tell us to just give up because the people of this world they don't have that faith that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai like we do but this lady back here and these brothers they had that faith. All right, verse 21 tells you she it tells you she stirred up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. All right? And we're going to come down to verse 30, 29. It says, "Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brother and take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brother." And she said to her own son, "Boy, if you don't go out there and die like a man like your brother's boy, boy, if you don't go out there and, and die <laughs> and what verse 30 while she was yet speaking these words the young man said whom wait ye for i will not obey the king's commandment but i will obey the commandment of the law that was given un unto our fathers by moses and thou that hast been the author of all mischief against the hebrews shalt not escape the hands of the most high power all right and so he went out on his shield he's turned around he said f y'all what y'all waiting on and when you continue on to read they took him and they tortured him. Uh, they they handled him the worst, you know, out of all the brothers. And then they went on to kill the mother. You know, this is the type of spirit that we have to have and that the elect will have going forth. All right. I can, man, this dude, this dude, man, these people in this world, you know, these niggas, man, niggas, six, six, three, six, five, buff. Man, these niggas is hoes, man. These niggas is hoes and they're going to be proved to be hoes. All these people out here that, that think they're, they're going to go out and riot and shoot guns in the streets, these dudes are suckers, man. Even these people who are so-called Christians who believe hard on Jesus Christ, when this shit gets real, what does it say in Isaiah 13 and 7? That these people's heart is going to fucking melt, all right? These people's heart is going to melt. They're, they're, they're going to fear in the day of adversity, all right, because they have no strength. Let's go to, what is this, Sarat, the first or second chapter? Let me see. You know, these people are straight weak sauce, y'all. Hey, the elect aren't going to crack under no circumstance. Let me see. Surat 1. Let's do this. You have Ecclesiastes 2 and 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. So the elect aren't going to make haste. The elect aren't going to accept a little plea deal to get less time on our sentence. Or accept the mark of the beast to not get our head chopped off or whatever the hell other form of torture or imprisonment or taking away the delicacies of this society that we have to face all right it simply is what it is and that's the type of faith that we have to have all right these people hey they're not going to be defended when the time comes because they don't have any faith you got many examples man you a hey, joseph and in, in uh, another angle the elect aren't going to the elect will rather suffer suffer wicked suffer wickedness for righteousness sake all right to get an example of that let's let's get with joseph now joseph 
you know, he ended up uh, going to prison. Uh, let's do this because he ra he chose to be uh, righteous in an opportunity of wickedness, even though he knew he was going to end up having to suffer. All right, now this is going to uh, be Genesis 39 and 7. It says, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. So Joseph was an Israelite under the Egyptians. Uh, he rose up to rank, and the Pharaoh, the head Pharaoh, his wife came to Joseph, said, Look, I want you to commit adultery with me. And what happened? Verse 8, But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master willeth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my, to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against the Most High Power? All right. It literally says, and sin against God. What a question mark. It says, uh, keep going, and it came to pass. So he said, no, I'm not going to do it. He says, no, man, this dude took care of me. He gave me everything here. The only thing I can't touch is you. So I'm not about to lie down with you. It says there is none great. Uh, no, it's like a 10. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. So she kept asking him, kept slinging it at him. You know, he'd probably walk by. She'd be butt necking in front of him. He'd turn around and take off, you know, writing notes and shit. Bullshit, bro. Wickedness. You could only you could only imagine just trying to slip shit in in, in his drink, trying to get him drunk and shit. <laughs> you know, bullshit. And he kept on fighting it. Verse eleven. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went to the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she called him by his garment, saying, "Lie with me." And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. So it got to the point to where she literally grabbed him by his clothes, by his garment, and was like, I'm not letting go of you until you do the do. And he got the fuck out of there, all right? He took off fleeing butt naked. All right, let's keep reading. And she called him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he, uh, okay, uh, verse 13, slock it. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, then she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me and cry with a loud voice. So then she went and lied on him. And ultimately, it got him arrested and put into prison. All right. And ultimately, you know, it happened for a reason. He ended up getting out. But I'm bringing this story up to show you that the righteous, the elect, will even resist opportunities of wickedness to preserve their righteousness, even if it costs them everything, even if it costs you all of your position and little things that you do have in society if it costs you your job your job your woman your children your housing all right the elect will not give in to esau edom and their demand and their demands and their threats like our guy did here man this dude ought to be ashamed of himself all right even people who nobody respects a traitor all right even the people who hire the traitor and make use of the traitor nobody respects that person hey that's the the wrap-up of the story of dealing with jason the man who wanted to become a uh, high priest during the time of onias and did many wicked things to secure that office ultimately it tells you he died in the land uh uh in the land of strangers you know he tried to go to the last of demonians the spartans you know they you know they they, they they didn't even get that nigga a proper burial all right why because hey there is no true benefit to being a traitor, all right? Especially for us, y'all. Man, we this is, we're coming to the end of the world. Why why betray? Now, out of all the past thousands of years, you could have been doing all your bullshit. But at these final days and times, that's not the way to go out. And the elect aren't going to go out like that, all right? So just a real quick lesson. You know, I just wanted to use this example. You know, that's a damn shame. Hey, the elect will not be... Uh, now, of course, there's agents in Israel, but the elect will not be infiltrated. The elect will will not be shaken and stirred and give up their faith and give in to the demands of this daggone devil to reduce their time or, or take the mark or none of that shit. The elect are going to hold true even if that means death. All right, so I'm going to give all praises to you. How about Shimi, how shy, Bahasham, Rakakurash, the honors to the elders and the apostles, great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations. To all the elect, Akim, walk, walk, and learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. And I'm going to say Shalom.